Okie dokes. Burn baby burn. All righty, so burns. So you know about the Parkland formula where you calculate the total body surface area for fluid replacement. I can tell you right now that's going to be important and that's going to be on the test. Is that like the two quarters? Yeah, so it's like the percent of the percent of their body that's burned, which you use the like the rule of nines or whatever to calculate, and then however much they weigh in the kilograms and the times the the milliliters. So I'm just that's just a freebie right there that will that will be on the test. All right. So burns are super big deal and they, they may not seem to be because you're like your skin is the biggest organ we have it does more than you know just it does a lot so like when we lose our skin um, we lose our protective barrier against infection and uh, it, we lose the ability to like maintain fluid balance so like if you were to lose all of your skin you know you've got all those fluids inside of you you know evaporation occurs so you lose the ability to like keep the fluids in. And I think of something crazy, like you can lose up to like five liters of in fluid like per day just from evaporation. So fluid balance is huge, huge deal. That and infection are a really big deal um, because your skin keeps out all the bacteria. And if you don't have skin, well then bacteria just are able to come straight to your body, to your bloodstream. So sepsis is a big deal. Um, so you have the epidermis is the first layer and then you have the, the dermis and you have the, hypo, the hypodermis, the fatty tissues. So depending on how far it's gone through is how you classify it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You have the first degree superficial, the superficial partial and the deep partial, the full thickness, the deep full thickness. So you have like this chart. You have the, I have this chart where it's like the deep thickness, the partial thickness, and it tells you like what signs and symptoms it'll have. Do you guys have that? In the PowerPoint? Yeah. Let's see. Or if not there, it's in the book. I just want to make sure because it's pretty helpful. Um, let's see here. Maybe it is. Yeah, this is important knowing how to calculate which one. Let's see. Superficial. Yeah, you do. It's just a little bit different. So I'll just go ahead and like draw a little bit of it so we can look at it. I thought this was great because it has like all the signs and symptoms for each one next to it. So you have the first degree, which is the superficial. This marker is not working super wonderfully. Okay, let's try a different, different marker. Try blue. Okay, so test, test question. <laughs> what color is it gonna be when you see first degree superficial? Yeah, pink or red, like sunburn. Right? When you get sunburn, it's pink or red. Will there be edema? No to maybe some mild swelling if it's like a really bad burn, right? Yeah. Um, pain, yeah. obviously, sunburn hurts really bad. Um, so there's all your nerves are still intact too. So like they can, feel, they can still have the ability to feel. Blisters, no. there will not be blisters. I have seen some people who do get some blisters with sunburn. That's yeah. really bad sunburn. <laughs> um, okay, SR, SCAR, I would say. Do you know, they talk about what that is? They briefly mentioned it. So it's like, you can maybe Google a picture of it. It's like this black, like dead tissue. So it looks like basically like char charcoal skin, like dead yeah. necrotic fluff, like slough. Um, so you will not have this in the first degree because it's not that deep. So no, um, healing time, just a few days, you know, three to five days. And then, will you need a graft? No, All right, no, and yeah. So then the next one after that is, what's the next stage? So partial, partial thick. Partial thick. Now we're going through again. A lot of these are going to be similar. It's the best way to study is like to pick out the ones that are going to be different. So, like for example, this one will have blisters. Yeah. And if you notice, like in my chart, like none of the other ones do. So, like if you see blisters on someone, you know it's got to be this 
this stage because none of the other ones are going to have them. So again, color is going to be pink to red still. So that's the same. And as they go this way, they're getting progressively worse. So this one's worse than this one. Uh, pain, yes. So mild, it's going to be worse. It's going to be mild to moderate instead of, wait, no, that's an edema, sorry. Wrong, wrong line. Pain is yes. Edema is, is the mild to moderate. So this is, again, related to like the fluid, you know, going to the area. Um, the, the worst like an injury is you usually have more swelling. So like if you sprain your ankle really bad, it gets swollen just because fluid and like blood and like different things are trying to brush the area, trying to make it heal, heal better. So more, more, uh, more edema. Um, where we have SR, there will not be SR. It hasn't gone deep enough yet. Healing time. This one, you know, maybe two weeks to get rid of all those blisters. Um, graphs. Yeah. So I've had a first degree and I've had a second, I guess you call it a second degree, you know, burn. So you know that there's a first degree, second degree, third degree burns that we know of. They just made more categories. So this would be a, like second degree, but it was just partial thickness. I've had both of those. I have not had any of the other ones. So the next one is deep partial. So it's still partial, but it's just deeper. They're a little bit confusing names. So deep, which they just called them one, two, three, four, five, would be a lot easier. Okay, what about this color? Is it going to be the same pink to red? Uh, no, like, I think the full thickness of one's like white tan, right? Uh, the full thickness, yeah. That's like so, black, brown, yellow, white, red. It could be like really any color. So this would be like cherry red. This one's, yeah, so this one can be red to white. So like as you're getting through the different layers, like once you get to the full layer, it might turn white because you're getting into the place where it's like a different layer of skin. So red, as you know, it's like pink isn't as bad, red is worse, and then white is even deeper. So, so you'll notice like pink, red, you know, pink, red, and then now it's red to white. And then the other ones, like the full thickness and the deep full thickness is now when you're like seeing like brown and black, because it's like the dead tissue. It's just really bad. Because this, you can come back from this as long as it's red and white, because you like that shows that the, the redness is like from blood. Right now, once you've like gotten rid of the red color, but the, the, there's no blood there because it's like completely like necrotic and just dead tissue. There's not really any coming back from that. You can't save that skin. You have to just take, you have to remove it so that until you get to the healthy skin underneath. Because that SR, the SR is what's the black stuff, and that's not coming back. That's just gone. If that makes sense. Will there be edema? So moderate, so mild to moderate, now moderate. Um, pain, yes, very painful. Blisters, so no, you can, it's rare. So that's why you like, look for the things that are different. So this is the only one that's gonna have that, right? Um, SR, there will be SR. But what's what's the consistency of it going to be? It's going to be soft. And whereas as you keep going, it's going to get hard. Okay, healing time. What do you think? Four weeks. Yeah, two to six weeks. I mean, I'm sure it varies yeah. depending on patient age and different things like that. Um, and what about grafts? Yeah, potentially depending on like if they're taking a long time to heal, like certain patients are going to have the late wound healing, like or if a diabetic gets a burn, they're going to take a lot longer. Or if someone has a his smoking history, uh, or if they're older, you know, people that are potentially slower to heal, or it's like young, young and healthy, really great, they may not need one. So just we'll just put maybe. And I don't think you have this specific chart in your notes. So if you want to take a picture of it when I'm done, yeah. you can do that. Some of the graphs they use from the years are different. Okay, so the next one, what's the next one called? Full thickness. Full thickness burn. So yes, there's more than first, second, and third degree burns. There's first partial thick, deep partial thick, full thick, and deep full thick. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been 
laundry. Okay, color literally could be anything. It could be brown, black, yellow, white, red. So I don't have to cook for this. Multi. <laughs> right. And that's gonna be different, right, than the other ones. So if they talk about like seeing yellow, brown, black, red, whatever, you'll know it's that one, but that one's different from the other ones. If you're trying to like identify which stage it is. Um, edema. Super severe, right? So this one is all the way through the skin, full thickness, right? So like severe injury. So severe edema is going to be a result. Um, let's see, what's the next one? Pain. Um, I don't say yes and no. <laughs> I assume that's because it's depending on like where, like if it goes through nerve endings, then you won't because the nerves are gone now. So yes and no. I imagine that having the place that there are pain would be really bad. I almost would rather have it burn through so it wouldn't hurt, but then you don't have nerves anymore. So maybe not. Um, okay, blisters. Nope, right? Because that's the only one. Um, SR. Yes. And it's going to be what consistency? Yeah, it's going to be hard and like, you know, like when you burn some places, are you a vegetarian? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever seen steak? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you ever been to a restaurant before? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so you picture a nice medium steak, right? Okay. Right, that's the soft SR. It's being burned, it's being yeah. cooked. As you cook it longer, it's going to get really, really well done until it's like it's hard and crunchy. So you're getting more and more burned, and now it's hard. That's my steak analogy. Um, where are we at? Healing. So healing time. Much longer. Weeks to months. And then graphs. Yes. All right. Now, the final stage, which is deep full thickness. So you can even go into like through the skin into the muscle and bone. And that's where we're at here. Deep, full thickness. And this one's going to be the one that's different too for the deep partial thick that's going to be soft because the other ones will have SR, but it's the only one that's going to be soft because that one's going to be hard and hard. Um, is there anything else that's really different? I mean, not super. I mean, severe edema for this one. These are just kind of like, yeah, sort of. Um, Okay, color. Think bird steak. Black. Black. <laughs> For this one, I feel like it kind of depends like what you burned. Like if you burned fat, it's probably gonna be more yellow. And if you burn like you know something else, maybe a different color. So I kind of feel like it depends like what full thickness you're talking about. Whereas this one you just like burn to a crisp, it's just gonna be black. Edema. There's not gonna be actually any. It's gonna be absent because you're so oh, you're so deep that there's nowhere for the fluid to be. So there's not gonna be any, which is different from the other one. So those two are different. It goes from severe to none. Um, pain, none, because there's no nerve endings, right? So that one's different. Um, blisters, no. Oh, uh, SR, yes. And it's gonna be the same as the other one, very hard, inelastic. And then healing time, same thing, weeks to months. So that's not gonna be different. And then graphs, definitely need those. So when I study, I try to like, just identify the ones that stick out as different to remember that. Um, Cause that will help you like when you identify and be like, oh, that's the one that's different. I'm remembering that. Do you wanna take a picture of that you can? And I, I don't think it's in your notes. Wait, wait, wait. Is there a glare? Can, can you get it? I can maybe take it from here if you want. That's good. That's good. Okay. Um, all right. If someone does have blisters, what do you do with them? You pop them, right? No. <laughs> yeah, so you don't pop them because that allows, if you were to pop them, then what happens? Yeah, it creates an open wound now. We're now like bacteria can get inside versus before if it's a blister, it's a closed system. You still have your barrier, 
right? You still have your skin barrier and it also has like this nice um, like fluid place where you have like can produce healing. So the, the fluid there is like protective against the, the, the skin. So the skin underneath is also damaged from the heat. So like that, that fluid collecting around it is helping to like keep it protected and keep it nourished in, in a sense, like keep it cool. So the blister is helpful. Um, now, what, are they, what do you do if you have Eschar? Do you wanna leave that there? No. Why don't you wanna leave that there? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's dead, necrotic, rotting flesh, right? Huge risk for infection because it's just sitting there like this dead, rotting thing on your body, which is gross, right? You got to remove it because the skin grows from the bottom up, right? So you have to have like the, the tissue that's healthy um, and especially for grafts, like grafts aren't, if, you have, if there's SR on there, the grafts aren't going to stick to that. They got to stick to healthy tissue to promote the healing. Um, all right, let's see. All right, this brings us to, I don't know if I'm just going to be skipping all over in your, in your order because my order is different. So we'll just see what gaps I left. Now, if you have a circ circumferential burn, do you know what that is? So maybe we didn't get, maybe you didn't get to it in class yet. A circumferential burn is, let's say like my entire arm all the way around gets burned. So like circumference, like, like the circle. So if all the way around got burned or maybe like around my torso through the back. So everything all the way around rather than maybe just one side. A circumferential burn poses different problems than like, let's just say like part of my leg because you know, the swelling, right? The edema is gonna happen. And so now you have like this big, sorry. Why is she calling me right now? Uh, I don't, hello? Hi. I am good. I am in the middle of teaching ASAP. <laughs> Come do what? Uh, probably two o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Okay, perfect. All right, bye. All right, bye. That was one of the nursing teachers. Oh. So I was like, I probably should answer that. <laughs> um, sorry, what was I saying? Right, okay, circumference, yeah. So if you have a burn all the way around the circumference um, and now you have all this edema, so now you have like this band of pressure um, surrounding your tissues. And so it's like squeezing in. Uh, it's kind of like if you were to tie a tight rubber band around your arm, like really tight, it's gonna be like blocking the circulation, right? So now you have like this tissue on the outside really, really swelling and really squeezing like all the stuff underneath of it is gonna be like constricted and like ah, no circulation. So you have a problem. So there's a couple things you can do that are not the most pleasant, but help to relieve some of that pressure. So one of the things you can do is called an escharotomy. Escharotomy, which is to, be, to remove like a tonsillectomy, escharotomy. So what you do is like, um, so let's say I have like a circumferential burn right here and it's really swollen and, you know, pressing in all the nerves and like I'm losing circulation in my hand. You can tell that I'm getting cyanotic here. What, what they do is take a scalpel or whatever and like slice through it to relieve the pressure. So it just kind of like, it, it's kind of like popping a pimple in a sense, like you, you make a portal to exit and like it allows it to open up. So it relieves all that pressure and it doesn't damage all this, the, the tissue underneath and block circulation to the distal extremities. So that's an escherotomy, slicing through the eschar, um, the dead tissue. So <sighs> yeah, I feel like sometimes it just depends on the situation. Um, what's nice about an escherotomy is that it's the dead tissue, yeah. right? So it doesn't have any feeling. So you don't have to do it under anesthesia because it doesn't hurt. Although if someone comes into the bedside and you tell them, hey, we're going to splice through your arm to relieve the pressure, they may have anxiety about that. So you can treat them with like, you know, suffer anxiety to kind of calm them down, but they don't need necessarily pain medicine because it's just the dead tissue, right? Now, if you do a fasciotomy, which is deeper which you have like the muscle fascia, you know, the, like the, what do you call it? Like the sac or the membrane that surrounds the muscles. 
that's even deeper than the SR and that will hurt because that's alive. So if they have to go even deeper to relieve pressure because that's just not enough, then yes, that's gonna require you know something for pain. Um, and I don't know what else your notes say about that, if anything. Have you, have you even gotten to that part in, in class yet? It's kind of frustrating because my notes are in a completely different order than yours. It's towards the end uh, after emergent care. Let's see. Circumferential burns. Uh, I don't know what marks syndrome. Yeah, it's a possible need for esterotomy and fasciotomy, which I mentioned. And that's all they say about it. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So fluid resuscitation is, is pretty much like the most important thing for burns. Again, because you're, you've lost your barrier and you're going to be like losing the, air, the water through the through the evaporation and through the edema as well, because you know edema causes you know it's from a fluid shift. So all the fluid inside the bloodstream is exiting, going into the tissues, and then getting evaporated. So that's not good. That's not helpful. So you want to start immediately your fluid resuscitation. You don't want to wait. So as soon as like they bring them in, you want to start that fluid resuscitation. So the first 24 hours to like eight, 48 hours, the most essential. Um, the fluid replacement helps with maintaining circulation. Um, it helps prevent infection because it's flushing things. It, maintaining body temperature is also really important. Um, I don't know, you know how like, you feel when you're like when you're wet and there's wind, like you feel much more cold than when you're dry. So when you don't have your skin, which is usually dry, and it's just like your wet tissue underneath and you have like the ambient temperature, it's gonna be super cold. So keeping them covered um, with, you know, with warm blankets, that sort of thing also helps reduce some of the evaporation as well. If you keep their, their body covered, um, let's see, cover them with a blanket, avoid hypothermia. Um, what else? Do they warm the fluids at all? Like... Yeah, that was a question I was wondering. I feel like they probably do because if you're just administering like cold, normal saline, I feel like that's probably not helping them stay warm. So I've, I know that they have like warmers they can use. So I would imagine that's probably true. Again, I don't work in a burn unit. I've never worked in a burn unit, so I'm not sure, but that would make sense. Um, all right, let's see. All right, different types of burns. So we got chemical burns, electrical burns, radiation burns. Those are all in your notes. So um, with chemical burns, you just gotta be careful because you know certain chemicals, um, I'm trying to think of, of one that burns, um, you know, different like acidic things, different alkaline agents, you know, they have like all these warning labels on chemicals, like under the sink and things. Um, if it's like a dry chemical, like a powder, you want to make sure you brush those off and don't like use a wet cloth to wipe them because now you just made them wet and activated them. Um, flushing, like if they get it in their eyes, for example, making sure you flush that out really well. Um, contacting like a poison control for more information because they would know specifically about like what exactly to do with that particular agent because you wouldn't want to mix it with something and then have a chemical reaction, right? That wouldn't be good. <laughs> um, you want to use gloves and goggles to protect yourself from the chemicals because then you can burn yourself. Um, was there anything else about, ch about chemical burns? Yeah, yeah. So they can absorb through the skin or the lack thereof. So you don't have skin to burn through. So monitoring for systemic effects, not just like, oh, they got burned right here. But if they got absorbed into the bloodstream and it's not circulating all these chemicals throughout, mm, maybe not the best. So like really learning or asking someone um, like a poison control about like, okay, what do I do with this one? Because some chemicals might, be, might not be as harmful, other ones might be really harmful. Now, electrical burns are um, more, more concerning for like heart, heart issues. So, you know, cause it's electric and you mean that the heart knows how to pump and knows when to beat based off electrical signals, right? So if you have a strong current of electricity come and interrupt that, you could have cardiac arrest. You could have 
um, you know, dysrhythmias because all that electricity is interfering with the SA node, right? So um, typically you're not going to have like, it's not going to look the same as like if someone just got burned by fire, right? They're going to have an entry wound and an exit wound. So that can be completely random. Like you could touch something on your hand, like maybe, I don't know, like an electrical fence or something, and it like go through your body and exit through your foot. So you have like a burn on your foot and on your hand. So it's not like the same looking as like a, like a flame. Um, the other thing with the electrical burns is that it's, even though you only see two portals of exit and entry, it went through your whole body, right? So it could potentially have harmed muscles deep within your body and damaged them on a deeper level. And I don't know if you remember from when we talked about MIs, how there's like different lab markers that you can take. You can look at troponins, you can look at um, CKNB, and there's also like a myoglobin test you can look at. And all of those test like muscle injury um, the troponins are the best for heart attack, right? Because it's specific to heart muscle. Now the myoglobin test really isn't super great for, for looking at for an MI because it references all muscle. So here we're talking about myoglobin urea. Is that in your notes? Yeah. So what that is, is myo refers to muscle. Um, the globin is like the proteins and the urea is the, is, is the urine. So what's happening is that all the muscle damage like within, in, within the body from the electrical currents that went through it, you can't see, but it damaged the muscles. And some of those muscle proteins are now coming off and going into the bloodstream, clogging up the bloodstream, getting clogged in the kid, kidneys. And so when this person urinates, you're gonna see it be like a really dark amber color because you're seeing those myoglobin proteins from the damaged muscles that got zapped, right? So, and that's from the deep tissue damage. Um, and that can damage the kidney because the, the myoglobin can clog it, you know, like if like a filter that strains things, it can start clogging the strainer and then have the inability for urine to start coming out. So you want to really, really monitor urine output for these patients. Um, if you see that it's like really dark brown, be like, okay, yeah, they have a myoglobin, myoglobin urea, making sure that they're not all of a sudden like not producing urine anymore. That'd be a really bad sign that like their kidneys are getting clogged. So fluid resuscitation is especially um, pertinent for these for these people to really flush them out um, to help dilute some of that myoglobin. So you're going to give even more fluids to these people. So maybe that would be something you would star for like where they ask about fluid resuscitation that electrical burns would need more. If that makes sense. Even though they have less total body surface area damaged than like a regular burn. You know, if you could have half your body burned in flames, but you only have an exit and entry wound for electrical burn, they're still going to require more fluids because of the myoglobin. Um, so radiation, um, you know, like radioactive things, you want to focus on protecting yourself. So using tongs or lead protective gloves to remove clothing or whatever off the patient so that you don't get exposed to radiation. Um, sure. What else we said about that one? Yeah, I guess. I don't really think of sunburn. Yeah, yeah, there's not much, I guess, to say. Electrical burn is probably going to be the most um, important to focus on. Thinking about dysrhythmias, um, the myoglobin and the urine output and the uh, fluid resuscitation. So those are the those are the things that are different from the other types of burns, right? Different from regular open flame and different from chemical burn. Let's see. I hate jumping around. I wish these would be in the same order. Um, systemic effects. Oh, this is so annoying. Let's let's talk about calculating total body surface area. At least I know that's in your notes. So total body surface area. Um, this is just going to be straight memorization. Um, I can maybe erase this. Are you were you through with this? Yeah. So I'm going to draw a beautiful stick figure man. It's going to be amazing. Okay. 
and back. Wow, that's awkward. I can draw better than this. I just don't care right now. <laughs> I promise. Wow, this is really bad. Look at that beautiful man. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I was a nursing major, not an art major. Okay, so, and there's like more technical like calculations, but a really handy one is the rule of nines. So in, in what's the word? In, increments? No. So when something's divisible by nine, they call it something of, divisible. no, like integers of nine. What is it? Multiples. Multiples. Thanks. Multiple. Um, Thanks, Mr. Math um, major. Um, Okay, yeah, so let's see how much you remember. What's for the head, um, like the whole head, including the back, the front, what percent? So nine. So rule of nine, so this is nine percent. It's easier to me to just do the total than to think the front and the back, so then I can just half it by two. If someone's like, oh, it was just the, it was just the back of the head, I'd be like, okay, half of nine. Rather than be like, okay, front is 4.5, Back is four point because it's like all these random numbers and it's hard to remember than just memorizing the total to me anyway. Um, head and neck, okay. Um, upper extremities, arms. Yeah, so nine again, nine percent each, so four point five for front and back. Uh, so if they had a circumferential burn, that would be nine, right? If it was just the one side, it'd be four point five. Um, what about the lower extremities? Yeah, so usually people's legs are a lot more heftier than their arms. Yeah. So these are 18 instead of nine, so it's double. Yeah. So instead of it being 4.5 for the front and back, it's nine for the front and back. 18, 18, torso, remember chest, chest area? Right, so 18 for front, 18 for back, so a total of 36. So oh, 18 for the front, the eight. Yeah. They had it split in half. Like nine for the abdomen. Right. I'm just doing like the upper oh. upper torso, sorry. Yeah. This area. 36. So half of the front would be 18, half of the I mean the back would be 18. That equals 36. And then the abdomen, like you said, is nine. Yeah. Groin one. one. Now I imagine that this could differ depending on whether it's male or female, like the front versus the back. Women typically have more surface area at the front than the back, if that makes sense. And I guess some men too, you know, men could have bigger breasts as well um, due to obesity. But that's probably just, this is probably just an average. So you probably have to take into account each individual patient, like, okay, this person has a lot bigger breasts, this person has a lot smaller breasts, they're gonna have more, maybe the front half is worth more percentage than the average, right? Because you can overestimate and you can also underestimate total body surface area, and that can have implications for your fluid resuscitation. And if you over or under perfuse them with water, then it can cause different problems, right? Ours says like nine, nine. I think they're. Oh, yours is just separated differently. So they're counting. It's still the whole front is 18. Like, oh, I see. Yeah, the whole front is 18. The whole back is 18. They've just separated it. Okay, so this is just poorly explained. So the whole, the whole, how can I do this? I'm going to make this easier. Let's do this. The top half is nine. The bottom half is nine. The back half is nine. The other half is nine, right? And so nine plus nine is 18, right? So the top half, this is 18. This part is 18. I was trying to separate it up the bottom because again, I had to take breasts for consideration. So again, all of that equals 36 for the whole thing. Okay. All of it, front and back. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was confusing. Um, and then, yeah, so then genitals and hand palm, 1%. So another thing you can do, like, let's say someone has gotten burned in a really, like, not 
in a way that isn't really conducive to measuring it like this. Maybe they have like a random splotch here and like a random splotch over here. So it isn't like the whole front. You're like, well, how much percent is that? You can take the person's palm, not the, not the wrist part and not the fingers, but just this part and kind of like see how many palms like fit the burned area and just make 1% for each hand palm. And so like, if they have like a really awkward shaped asymmetrical burn, you can be like, okay, that's about 5%. Does that make sense? Um, so you can do that because it's better to use their palm than your palm because they might have bigger or smaller palms. Or if you have about the same hand size as the, as the patient, that's fine. Um, yes. So that's the rule of nines. Um, what is yours in here? The Lund and Browder classification? Yeah, she said that. Just, just FYI. Yeah. Okay. I've never heard of that before. So we're just going to skip that. Um, I think it's, it's basically similar to the rule of nines anyways, because it doesn't use easy to remember numbers. It's like more accurate. Um, all right. Next. Let's see. Um, let's see. Talked about that. Talked about that. Look at, um, What's next for you? You want to do Parkland formula? So maybe a practice one. Let's say this patient here weighs 50 kilograms. I'm going to need your math skills, so pay attention. Okay, so the, the, the formula, does yours say two to four mLs or is it just two to four? Yeah. So should we just pick three or two for the, for? Yeah. Let's just pick two because that's easier. Okay. Doubling something is easier. So the formula is percent of burn times their weight in kilograms times two to four mLs, right? And we're going to go with two today. Are they going to tell you like which to pick or do you do a know. range? I'm going to have to ask because I was like, how are we supposed to know? I feel like, okay, I feel like if they ask in the question a range, then the answer will probably be a range, like 500 to 700 mLs. You know, that's probably what it's going to be. So then maybe it would just be better to pick three and then just see which one falls into the range. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right, you math person, come ready for the answer. Yeah. So let's say I'm going to tell her, I'm going to do it a different color so we can see. Let's say the red parts are going to be their burn areas. Their hands burned, uh, their groin is burned. Their upper torso in the front is burned, and their head is burned. So when you guys do the formula, are you adding percentages together? Because mm -hmm. it's total body surface area. So it'd be nine plus one plus nine plus one. Okay. Twenty. So twenty percent burn. Right. Twenty percent burn times their weight in kilograms. Don't get fooled because I promise they'll probably put pounds in the test. And then it's like, oh shoot, didn't notice. Times 50 times two and then also times four to give us a range. 2,000 to 4,000. That was easy because it's just, okay. Well, I don't do math. That's why I have him. So 2,000 to 4,000 mLs is how much you want to give. And how do you give it? Does yours, mine says that you want to give half of that amount within the first eight hours, yeah. and then you want to infuse the rest of it over the next 16. So you would give, uh, let's say 3,000 is the, is the middle, right, between two and four. So half of that would be 1,500 in the first eight hours, and that would leave 1,500 left to give over the next 16 hours, right? Yeah. So what's 1,500 divided by 16? It's like this, right? That's what it looks like. I have not done long division since middle school. 93.75. So that's about how much you would give per hour after you give the 1500. Does that make sense? Did, did I lose you there? Okay. I tried to pick like easy numbers. Wow, look at this math. I should be a math teacher. <sighs> He's a math teacher. Well, sort of. He graduated with that anyway. All right. Um, Okay. Okay. The other thing they had put on here to remember is that 
when you do the fluid replacement, it's calculated from the time of the injury, not from when they got to the hospital. So, you know, if they got burned an hour ago, but they're, you know, they've been in the hospital an hour, you've already lost an hour of your eight hours to give it in. So you might have to do it faster. Does that make sense? So you're like, okay, we have to get the first half and the first eight hours, and they've already lost one on the way. Does that make sense? So you have to give it, give the, give that 1500 faster. All right, that was a good practice. Okay, us. Um, okay, cool. My next whole page is like just practice question. Um, okay, so how would you know, like how would you evaluate the patient to see if they're getting enough fluid or too much fluid? Like your output's Your a good one. Like yeah, if the fluid shift corrects itself, they should start to lose that edema. Um, if they have, um, you might want to check like their heart rate, you know, because like when you have, when you're dehydrated or like hypovolemic, what does your heart rate do? It goes up to compensate, right? So if you get better fluid volume and you, or euvolemic is the fancy word, it should regulate, it should regulate itself, go back down. Blood pressure is another one, like regulate it'll be really low if you're if you're all fluid shifted out into the, the tissue so it'll get back up to a healthy level enough they're fluid overloaded you know their blood pressure is going to skyrocket you might get edema again because now you're fluid overloaded right you know crackles in the lung those the type of things you would expect to see like maybe with like you know with congestive heart failure when you're fluid overloaded it's you kind of see the same thing so um you would just really want to assess the patient to see how are they responding to the amount of fluid i'm giving do i need to give less or more maybe start with like the middle range and maybe go up or down you know between 2000 and 4000 depending on how they're responding um let's see um for... did you guys talk about graphs So there's like different types of graphs. Um, graphs are interesting. Um, you can have like, you can donate graphs from yourself, um, which is, they have the most success because there's no, there's not gonna be any rejection, you know, because it's not someone else's body. They also have um, cadaver graphs, which you can get from dead people who donate their body to science. Um, Heterographs, which are from other species. What are, did they mention like in your notes, like which animals they typically use? Pigs. Pigs. Yeah, so that's interesting that apparently we have a similar skin type to, to pigs, um, that they're most compatible with human skin. Um, and they're ch the graphs are changed pretty often. Um, you have to get rid of all the SR first, so it's in contact with healthy skin. Um, there's, you can use a human placenta. They don't tend to last super, super long. They don't vascularize well. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different, they tend to be expensive. Um, the autographs, you know, the ones that from yourself. I actually had a, my friend, her mom burned herself really, really bad on her hand. Like, I think she was cooking. It was like a grease burn. Those are worse than like the water ones. There's her whole thumb area. And it was looked really bad. And so she got, she donated skin from her butt because you know your butt isn't really usually seen very often it's not like your face or your leg so she got some from there and like moved that skin onto onto her hand and it was different color because like your hands are usually more tan than your your butt cheek you know because you're probably not that's not out in the open very often <laughs> but then like it healed really well and like when it started getting like exposed to the sun like you could hardly hardly tell and she also wore this, um, like this compression glove. I think they mentioned that in your notes too, where, you know, the thing with scar tissue too, like, is that it can get harder. You ever have a, have you ever seen someone with like a really big scar? Like the skin is, isn't stretchy and like pliable, like the rest of the skin, it's like kind of stiff and hard. So that's a problem around joints, right? Let's say like I burn like all of this really bad and it's like really thick scar tissue. I'm, you can get contractures where like you can't actually like get that full range of motion because the skin is so tight. So they recommend using like these compression things to keep like the scar tissue as small as possible to keep it from like getting really big, help with like lumpiness, you know, especially if like on the face, uh, it's really bad. Like once on the face, because then like you have to get the scar tissue and like 
kind of random lumps and the compressions will help to keep it smoother and look nicer uh, to pre prevent some of that. So infection control um, is probably one of the biggest concerns along with the fluid resuscitation with burns because they have no protection. It's just like literally an open environment for bacteria to come through. Um, so one of the medicines I think they mentioned was silver sulfadiazine. That cream really helps stop bacterial growth. Um, it's specifically for burn patients. You just rub it all over the area um, and that helps with infection. Um, I don't know what they would ask you about that unless they have the only thing I can think of is if someone has a sulfa allergy can't use that because it's literally silver sulfa thiazine so it's sulfa um so hand hygiene meticulous wound care isolation if the, it's basically you treat this person like if they were autoimmune not autoimmune but like immune deficient because they essentially are so like you're limiting visitors limiting things that can carry bacteria to protect the patient um what else? Um, oh, giving this person a Foley because it's, they probably can't really get up to go to the bathroom because if they got really a lot of burns. So the Foley will serve two purposes. Can you think what those might be? The first thing it helps with is keeping them clean and dry so they don't wet themselves and then they're just sitting in a pool of urine which promotes infection so keeping them clean but also really monitoring their urine output for like the fluid resuscitation you know it's, it's much easier to measure urine output from a foley than like from a bedpan you know you can have like it measured to the milliliters right and really monitoring how much is coming out um you they also have hyperbaric oxygen chambers which is like with with burn victims, you know, you really want to like get as much oxygen as possible. So they have like increased oxygen or like a, one of those hyperbaric chambers where they go in and it's just like high pressured oxygen to help get to those tissues to really help reverse some of that necrotic stuff if you can. As like it's the faster you get it, like the better, right? Um, the, fa the faster you can help get the circulation back. Um, pain management is super huge for these people um, because you can imagine like I've literally touched a pan with my finger and like it was the worst pain of my life and so like having that all over your entire body would be literally awful so pain management um iv is the way to go because it goes directly in obviously you can't really use like topical pain medicine because they don't really have like skin for that and like po isn't going to work as well it's just not as strong sub q again if they might not have any sub q tissue because it might be burned um, I am kind of the same situation. So IV is just the way to go, go straight to the bloodstream. Um, what do you think is going to be important as far as nutritional needs for burn victims? Probably dehydrated, so like using like electrolytes. And yeah, electro electrolytes are going to be all over the place. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you remember from that, like A and P, a lot of the potassium is stored inside the cell. So when the cells rupture from tissue damage or heat or whatever, or not heat, like the, the bursting from the flames, the potassium is going to escape into the, into the bloodstream, right? So now you're going to be hyperkalemic, right? And now as your fluid resuscitating them, flushing them out and they're urinating, you're going to lose all that potassium. So now you have hypokalemia. So like really monitoring potassium is huge because that again goes with heart rhythms especially like an electrical, if someone has an electrical burn, you know, and dealing with the elect electrolytes on top of that is going to be a big issue um, for potassium. Um, as far as caloric needs, do you think they're going to require more or less calories? They're also... Yeah, definitely more. So they have like major tissue loss, right? And so like they have a lot of wound healing to do. And if you remember like protein is really important for wound healing. Um, like they're literally trying to regenerate like maybe half their, their percentage of their tissue, right? So that's gonna require tons of protein. So they have like 5,000 calories recommended a day. 
right? Because they're like, you require so much to like literally regenerate all of your skin, right? That, that requires a lot. Um, so whenever there's wound healing, like increasing protein is a big deal. Um, they'll probably put them on an NG tube because expecting a patient to eat 5,000 calories of food a day, not very realistic. Um, it's a lot they will be eating all day. And also like, you usually don't feel so great. Like with pain and nausea, you don't really want to eat. Right. So NG tube, make sure they get that, get that in them because they're not going to want to eat. They're like in pain. The last thing you really want to do is like take a big bite of a big burger or something when you're like screaming in pain and you're nauseous and all that stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, reducing, like I said, the, for like management, like after the fact, reducing scarring isn't just for um, appearances, it's for function because reducing scarring will prevent contractures and permanent disability. Uh, so really patient education is super important about like wearing those compression garments because they're not going to want to wear them because they're going to get, they're going to get tired of wearing them, but like really explaining like, Hey, like this is going to help keep you like functioning because uh, you don't want your like your hands like there's a lot of complex motions that you do with your hands those get scarred over you can lose the ability to like use your fingers and those joints and that's not fun so um i'm just gonna let you ask if there's anything specifically that you see in your notes because i'm running out of time rapidly and i don't want to like just talk unless you have something like specific that you're wondering about you want your note back your powerpoint Anything that you just heard in class? I was like, oh, what is that? You mentioned like the destruction of red blood cells. So I don't know if you can go over that a little bit. Oh, not the red blood cells, but just like the the cells of like the tissues. Like oftentimes, um, I don't know if you remember like the sodium potassium pump from A and P. So like the sodium comes in, the potassium comes out. Like a lot of the potassium is stored inside the cell, right? So when those rupture due to the burns, right? Like literally burning the cells and all the contents spill out, all the potassium is now rushing out of the cells because they're destroyed into the bloodstream. So now you're gonna be like whoop, hyperkalemia. And then as you're fluid resuscitating them, that's what you do. They're gonna flush all those fluids out. So now you've just lost all of your potassium. So now you're gonna be hypokalemic. So like really monitoring electrolytes is important. That was the, the whole point of that spiel is that you should need to watch their electrolytes. Anytime there's like fluid issues and fluid shifting, electrolytes are always going to be an issue. Yeah. And that matters for all sorts of things, heart rhythms, muscle contractions and seizures and all sorts of stuff. Anything else? I have no idea what part of your notes I did. <laughs> I did most of it. Okay. <laughs> Was there anything you had like a, a big question about that didn't make sense? No, I think so. Well, as you learn more, we will go over more. So next week we will finish burns and whatever else you happen to start. Do you know what you're going to be starting next week? Renal. Renal? Yep. Cool. I'm going to stop recording.